Having realized this resolution of phenomena to be an unfettered state of infinite evenness, you come to the decisive experience in this naturally expansive state that entails no evaluation whatsoever. It is of no concern whether or not the nature of being is spontaneous presence. It is of no concern whether or not you are bound by dualistic perceptions of affirmation and denial. It is of no concern whether or not you have arrived at the enlightened intent of the true nature of phenomena. It is of no concern whether or not you follow in the footsteps of the masters of the past. Now, there are no distinctions to be made on the basis of this awareness. Nothing need be done about phenomena, and even if you were to try to do something, nothing exists as a phenomena. Existence and non-existence are extremes. Is and is not a ordinary consciousness. View and meditation are fetters. The true nature of phenomena is a potential point of error. Samsara and Nirvana are awareness. Awareness is unobstructed, and this unobstructed quality is naked. What remains is consciousness that is naturally expansive openness unfettered and seamless. If it is thought about, there are concepts if it is meditated on, there is ordinary consciousness. If it is described, 
there are words. If it is looked at, there is dualistic perception. If it is left alone, there is the true nature of phenomena. While if anything is done, there is samsara. If anything occurs, it arises naturally. What remains is consciousness, settled in its own place, open like the sky. Joyous and blissfully spacious. It is not so by being made so. It is not seen by being searched for. It is not freedom that is cultivated in meditation. It is not ensured by being sought. It is not freedom that comes from relaxing. It is not ensured by being reified. What remains is bare consciousness in all its nakedness. The state that is beyond labels and in which phenomena resolve. Nothing stands between samsara and nirvana. The unobstructed state leaves no trace. In what naturally arises, there is no bias. In natural freedom, there are no phenomena. In the resolution of phenomena, there are no labels.
In view and meditation, there is no evaluation. In self-knowing awareness, there is no ordinary mind. In openness, there is no bias. There is no basis for origination or cessation. What remains is naturally lucid, uninterrupted consciousness that is immediate and without bias. It is free, even in arising, empty, even in manifesting, and evanescent, even in stirring. It is, even as it is not, while it is not, even as it is. It is non-existent, even in being present. while it is nonetheless present, even in being non-existent. It stirs, even in abiding, while it abides, even in stirring. What remains is meditative stability as the ongoing flow of natural, seamless consciousness. You may meditate on it as existent, but it is impossible to affirm. You may meditate on it as non-existent, but it is impossible to deny.
You may view it as both existent and non-existent, but it is not subject to such extremes. You may think of it as both or neither of these, but it is not subject to such bias. It may manifest as pleasure or pain, but these leave no trace in their wake. It exhibits a pristine quality as the true nature of phenomena. But ordinary consciousness does not ensue. There is uninterrupted freedom but you do not maintain some fundamentally unconditioned state. What remains is unconstrained and unbiased consciousness that has free reign. Let it exist, let it not exist, let it manifest, let it be empty, let it be, let it not be, let it be good. Let it be bad. Let it be realized. Let it be not realized. What remains is a naturally pristine, naked state. Consciousness that is empty and evanescent, an all-embracing open dimension in which no traces remain. There has never been freedom, for there is no basis for it. There is no recognition of the very essence of being, for there is no duality. You do not engage in view and meditation for nothing need be done. You do not maintain the way of abiding, for it is not some state. You do not try to settle naturally 
for there is no abiding. Freedom does not lie in some natural state, for it has no support. There is nothing that is timelessly pristine, for there is no basic space. In the final analysis, there is no bias, for you are beyond perceiving or attaining anything. What remains is naked consciousness, in which there are no phenomena and nothing need be done. Do not bind this in the trap of view and meditation. Do not force it into some empty framework as the true nature of phenomena. Do not maintain it within the context of the way of abiding. Do not try to elicit it as an unobstructed state in all its nakedness. Do not rush headlong into the narrow confines of things simultaneously arising and being freed. Do not act with the aim of gaining natural freedom. Do not consign yourself to an inexpressible experience of the fundamentally unconditioned state. Since there can be a strong counterproductive tendency to waste time on the innate clarity of your experience, in letting awareness, which has no reference point, rest evenly with no focus, do not meditate on phenomena. Do not change your ordinary consciousness. Do not anticipate anything. Do not follow after anything that has passed. And do not try to hold on to the present.
without your having to maintain its unobstructed quality. What remains is naturally unfolding awareness, which cannot be evaluated as a supremely spacious expanse, free of limitation. Now, whatever manifests is pristine in that it is not subject to restrictions and so transcends any evaluation of whether it is or is not. This point which you come to in all its immediacy is described in the Pearl Garland. Whatever is said or planned or done is conduct that expresses the lucidity of emptiness and awareness. Concepts of good and bad are the vast expanse of the ongoing flow of meditation. Opinions that wrong views are correct are the view of unbiased yoga. All reification involving hope and fear is fruition that occurs without obstruction. is so, you ask. Since enlightened intent does not stray from the true nature of phenomena, there is freedom in the state that is beyond labels and in which phenomena resolve. Therefore, you perceive whatever manifests to be the display of naturally occurring timeless awareness and realize that it is like the reflection of your face in a mirror. So what you perceive outwardly the display of awareness is nothing more than an expression of emptiness that has no origin. since its true nature is pure like space. You perceive that there is no duality between it and the true nature of your awareness.
whatever manifests then is an expression of emptiness, the display of awareness. Whatever stirs in the mind is timelessly pristine and leaves no trace. Since its true nature is one of equalness throughout the three times, there is freedom in the supreme state beyond ordinary consciousness, in which nothing need be done. Therefore, the teachings refer to the time when phenomena which involve acceptance and rejection resolve. the reverberation of sound states. There is no straying from this single enlightened intent. Sensory appearances are clearly evident in the immediacy of their manifesting. Like a face in a mirror. So freedom is that, and that itself is freedom. Since these are naturally occurring empty objects, there is no separation in awareness between perception and consciousness of them. That itself is freedom in all its immediacy. Because everything is free when this single point is understood. All attempts to quantify it as two or three fail.
nothing that manifests can be conceived of or reified as an object. Mental stirring and reification are timelessly empty. Given the perfection of the lucid, enlightened intent of emptiness, all attempts to quantify myriad things fail. It can be shown that for yogins, for whom realization has arisen from within, whatever arises is free within its true nature, without any possible alternative. Let whatever happens, happen, and whatever manifests, manifest. Let whatever occurs, occur, and whatever is, be. Let whatever is anything at all, be nothing at all. That is to say, there are no distinctions whatsoever to be made from the perspective of awareness. Since things arise within the scope of a single awareness, no quality of better or worse affects the ground of being. Since all that arises is nothing other than the dynamic energy of awareness, no quality of better or worse affects the essence of that dynamic energy. Because things are already free in arising. If they are not reified, they are understood to be identical in that they are naturally evanescent. So no quality of better or worse affects their essence.
whatever arises, whatever manifests, is already empty. For it is a non-existent manifestation within the ground of being. Since there is no concern that has ever existed, there is no need for ordinary consciousness to reify what, like water in a mirage, manifests clearly without existing. Therefore, yogins never have to choose between accepting or rejecting any of their thoughts or the sense objects they perceive. because these are all understood to be identical within the state that is beyond labels and in which phenomena resolve and which has no underlying basis. They are conventionally described as being beyond extremes. The natural freedom of awareness states Sensory appearances are devoid of substance. Emptiness transcends all characterization. Transcendence is inexpressible. 